Hear the holy roar of God resound. Hear the holy roar of God resound. Watch the waters part before us now. Watch the waters part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us. Tell the world of his great love. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Let God arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. His enemies will run for sure. His enemies will run for sure. The church will stand, she will endure. The church will stand, she will endure. He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who Says, let God arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Our God is a God who saves. 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 Let God arise. Let God arise. Well, good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning, Forsyth Online, our Bible study and worship time, communion time. So uh, we thank you for joining us. We're very glad that you're here. My name is John Dobbs. I'm the preaching minister at Forsyth Church of Christ. And this is Daniel Kirkendall, who is our associate minister. And so we are very honored that you have decided to be here. We'd like for you to not just watch. I know it's tempting to just sort of sit back and watch uh, this video together, but but engaging is what gives it some extra special meaning because we don't want anybody to feel alone. We want you to know that there are other people watching, and the only way for that to happen is for you to write something in the comments. It can just be, hello, good morning, uh, and if you see a friend who's signed on and you want to say hello to them, uh, then you can feel free to do that. My Uncle Ray watches from Vicksburg and my mom, her brother, uh, his, his sister. Did I say that right? I anyway, no anyway, she'll <laughs> say, welcome, Uncle you know, Ray Hearn. So, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just a way to say hello. And, and, and that way, everybody just knows who's watching. And, and, uh, and it doesn't, doesn't distract at all from our time together. I think it adds to it. Because we're doing this, we started doing this over a year ago mm -hmm. because of coronavirus and being shut in and not being able to gather. And and so uh, I think that was really important. And now not everyone is out. And sometimes people are watching for other reasons, not just the virus. Maybe they're at home with a, another illness or just unable to get out to church today. And so for whatever reason that you're watching, we welcome you. We're glad that you're here. Please like and share this video. And uh, and and we and it helps us to get the word out, uh, and I think it's a blessing to the people who watch. Uh, and John and I have talked about this, and and we believe that everyone who's watching, all of you, are a vital part of who we are. 
um, as a church. And so we want to get to know who you are as well. And we want to be able to help you and bless you any way that we can as a church. And I think the best way to do that in a virtual way is to go to our website, facoc.org is right here uh, at the bottom of our screen. So uh, go visit that after this video. And you, a number of things you can do, you can look, look at uh, sermon transcripts, uh, but there's a communications tab, and that's really uh, what I want to talk about for, for a short minute is on that communications tab, it'll bring up a box. If you have a prayer request, we will honor that prayer request. If you have a physical need, we'll do what we can to, to meet that. If you have a Bible question or a question concerning your faith, uh, we would like to help you with that if at all possible. Also on our website, you can give online to support our missions and ministries that we're uh, we're trying again. We're trying to bless as many people as possible. So we're involved in uh, international mission work and and really uh, community uh, ministries uh, here in Monroe and the Wachita Parish area. So if you'd like to help with that, uh, there's a safe and secure way uh, to do that online. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, again, use the comment section, hit the like, hit the follow. Uh, it's a neat way to interact with others. If you're watching on YouTube, you can go back and look at the at the past videos that we've posted. It does a good job of, of cataloging those so they kind of stay in order. Either way, I feel honored that you have chosen to be here uh, watching this video today. Absolutely. And while we're watching this, uh, if you're watching as the video premieres, we're meeting live on campus at 2101 Forsyth Avenue in Monroe. And we would love for you to come and join us some Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for worship. We have room for you. And if you're out and around in the community and around other people already and kind of feeling comfortable with that, uh, we would certainly love for you to come and be a part of our worship assembly, especially if you've been watching and we haven't uh, ever met you in person. That would bring us so much joy to be able to to say hello and, and get to meet you. And so we hope that uh, more and more as we go along, more and more people will do that. We had a great crowd for uh, Easter Sunday. A lot of people coming out for our two worship services we had last week. But we generally have one worship service, 10 o'clock Sunday mornings. And we just started this week meeting on campus Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. So on Wednesday, uh, we also would like for you to come and participate in that uh, as well. The doors are open. We would love to meet you and just wanted you to be aware of that. We're going to start uh, before our message this morning. We're going to start by watching a brief video. Sometimes it's moments of brokenness which create the greatest transformations. Times where fear gives birth to faith, pain leads to healing, and chaos dissolves into peace. It's in these times we often see God more clearly. For in our deepest turmoil, He remains faithful. When our spirit is crushed, He remains strong. When our moment is too heavy, He carries the burden. As gold is refined by fire, we too are often refined by struggle. It's part of growing, changing, becoming. Lately, the journey has been difficult. Our breath has been labored. Our steps uneasy, but we stand in faith, knowing who is leading us through this desert, the God of peace, the God of hope, the God of restoration. Today we are ending a series of sermons that we've been involved with for several weeks now called Lost and Found. And that series has come from the latter half of the Gospel of Luke. And so we're uh, kind of at a culmination here. We've been studying through the Gospel of Luke since December, and we're coming to a close with that today. And I think that this 
uh, lesson is as important and needful as any of the ones that we've looked at. As we've talked about the ideas of being lost and found, we've talked about the prodigal son who got himself lost, but who was able to find his way home to a forgiving father. We talked about Lazarus who lived through a terrible life of suffering and pain, but who was found by God in eternity, was experiencing comfort that he never had when he was alive. We talked about Zacchaeus who needed someone to believe in and someone to believe in him. We talked about the thief on the cross who in his last desperate hour was found by Jesus and taken to uh, the, the invited to walk the gardens of heaven. And we talked about the crucified and resurrected Jesus who gives us all hope for life here and in eternity. And so in all of those cases, we were talking about lost and found. We really, I hope that the message came through that we, we weren't talking about someone else. We were talking about us. We're talking about you and talking about me. We've all been lost and found. And then today, I want us to focus in on the reality that there is an uneven road ahead for disciples of Jesus Christ. When we become Christians, sometimes I think people believe that life is just going to become so much better. And in some ways, it does. And there's more direction. There's more uh, a sense of God's presence. And, and you know, there's some, some great things about the Christian life. But that doesn't mean that nothing bad's ever going to happen again or there won't be any more struggles or hardships. Uh, it's going to be an uneven road. So I want to look at this story as the end of Luke, Luke 24. Uh, we're going to start in about verse 13. We're probably not going to read everything here, uh, but our, our text is through verse 35. And in this text, we realize uh, as Luke tells this story, that there's an uneven road ahead for disciples of Jesus. And only Luke tells this story. So it's very interesting. Let's start at Luke 24, verse 13. Now, that same day, and this is Resurrection Day, that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened and as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. And one of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Well, what things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. And in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And so on this road to Emmaus, they have an encounter with Jesus Christ, but they don't realize that they're talking to the risen Christ. And so in next in the text, as we're not going to read uh, all of it, as I said, but next in the text, Jesus uh, has a Bible study with them. He just talks about the, the whole Bible from the beginning. Uh, and then they go to an evening meal together. And while they're sitting there at that meal and breaking bread, the Bible says their eyes were opened in verse 31, and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. What an amazing moment that we have kind of been privy to all along, that this is Jesus they're talking to. And it's kind of funny that Cleopas would say, you know, are you the only one who doesn't know what happened in Jerusalem? He knows more than anybody what happened in Jerusalem. And, and so, but, but then he's at that meal, and it's when their eyes are opened, when they're breaking bread, that, um, that they realize that we have been in the presence of the risen Christ. And Jesus disappears. And so it's an exciting kind of uh, moment. And they say in verse 32, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? 
And so they did what they naturally would do. They turned around and went back to Jerusalem to the other disciples who were gathered up and all talking and sharing similar experiences because Jesus is risen indeed. And they are beginning to have experiences with him. And I'm so glad for this story because... It tells us that the, that when you're a disciple of Jesus, there are uneven roads ahead. There are difficult times ahead. And I want to think about some lessons we can learn from, from this uh, account. Uh, because disciples do travel an uneven road. We, You and I travel an uneven road. And there are a lot of things that make it uneven. One of those things is just disappointment. You know, in spite of the fact of the empty tomb, they seem to believe everything is over. If you remember, if you read Luke's account, uh, the women go to the tomb not to to see if Jesus arose from the dead. They go with spices to tend to a dead body. Uh, and they find the stone rolled away in the empty tomb, and the angels tell them. But when they go back and talk, tell the other uh, disciples what's happened, they all think that the women are talking out of their minds. And so they don't believe them. And Peter and John go running down to the tomb. And Luke says Peter is just wondering what happened, what happened. Even though Jesus had told them over and over again that he was going to raise up from the dead on the third day. But in spite of the fact that they should have known, they were disappointed in their minds. Everything is over. They've given up a lot to follow Jesus. They've left their former lives behind. They've been... Uh, following him for a couple of years, and and um, and their identity with him has now suddenly been disrupted. You know, uh, when you're a disciple of Jesus, disappointment can be part of your experience too. We pray, and we don't see the answer to that prayer in the way that we wanted it. Uh, we work so hard to overcome persistent sin, but then we turn around, and there it is again. And uh, there are just disappointments along the way. We get disappointed in other people who we thought we could trust, but it turns out we couldn't. And I mean, there's a rough road ahead for everybody. Not only disappointment, but discouragement. If you listen to them as they talk about this in verse 20, they said, we had hoped they crucified him, but we had hoped he was the one who's going to redeem Israel. You know, we, we thought something else was going to happen, but this is what really happened. And there's not only disappointment, there's discouragement. They're walking out of town. They're leaving town. You know, I don't know what else to do with myself. Uh, our hopes seem to be misplaced at times. Jesus is with them, but verse 24 says they did not see Jesus. They didn't know that that was him talking to them. Uh, I think the thing about discouragement that makes it so hard is that discouragement tells an untrue story. You know, discouragement tells us prayer doesn't work. You know, it's uh, we prayed and we really thought this was God's will and we were sure of it and then it didn't happen. And so, you know, prayer just doesn't work. It's an untrue story, but it's what discouragement tells us. We can't overcome our struggles. You know, you can work real hard and you can do all that stuff, but you're going to go back to it anyway. You know, it's, it's, it's impossible to overcome. Following Jesus doesn't make life better. People are always going to be untrustworthy. And we have these sort of of discouraged uh, philosophies of life or approaches to things. And really, those are untrue stories that keep us from enjoying what God has planned for us. It's the third day, nothing happened. You know, the tomb's empty. Who stole the body? I mean, it's all these things were going through their minds. What's been hard on your Christian journey? Well, what's been difficult for you as a person who follows Jesus Christ, what is it that you've had struggles with? You know, one of the best known Christians, maybe in the world, was Billy Graham. Billy Graham wrote that the Christian life is not a constant high. He said, I have my moments of deep discouragement. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, oh God, forgive me or help me. If someone that we hold in high esteem as a great Christian and evangelist has those kinds of thoughts and discouragements, it's just the truth that all of us are going to face an uneven road. It's not always going to be great. It's not always going to be awesome. And if you know anybody who's always up, it's always awesome, it's always great, they're just not letting you see the whole story. 
It's an uneven road. But I do think in this story, we see some keys to traveling the uneven road ahead. So I want to give you just three ideas from this text as we uh, conclude this series and this sermon. One is to pay attention to the directions. If we're on a Christian journey together, uh, one of the things we need to do is pay attention to the directions. When Jesus uh, you know, when they, they, he was with them and he's talking to them before they knew it was him. Verse 25 says, he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. I think this is an amazing privilege to have a Bible study with Jesus where he opens up the Bible. And of course, they don't have the same kind of book that we have today, but maybe scroll. But he's talking to them about the scriptures and he starts with Genesis. And he just goes in the beginning and talks about all the ways that the scriptures point to him. And that's one thing that we need to realize is the whole Bible is about Jesus. One script, one writer said, we do not properly read our Bibles until we see how it connects to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The Bible tells one story with Jesus as the star. And so when we think about the, the traveling the road ahead, we want to pay attention to the directions we find in Scripture. What is, what is Jesus telling us in Scripture? In Hebrews 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off everything that hinders and of sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So we have a path ahead. We have a journey ahead of us. And the way that we walk that journey is by keeping our eyes on Jesus to, to pay attention to the direction. So we keep going the right directions, laying aside the things that hinder us and cause us to, to wander away. Pay attention to directions and then pay attention to your traveling companion. As we talked about, Jesus was walking with them uh, on that road to Emmaus and sat down to dinner with them. They still didn't know who he was, but he was with them all along. And I believe Jesus has been with you, whatever your toughest moments have been and whatever the discouragements and the disappointments have been. Jesus is walking with you through them. And don't ever take your eyes off of that. And continuing in that passage from Hebrews chapter 12 uh, and verse 2, the writer says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And so the whole, the whole point of this passage is don't grow weary and lose heart. Don't, don't give up. Don't become discouraged and, and disappointed and, and wander away from God. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. He's with you through all of this. And we learn about Jesus in the pages of Scripture, and we experience Him as we walk with Him on a daily basis. And as you face disappointment and discouragement, and, and those things are going to come. And as you face them, turn your eyes to Jesus. Listen to what he said. Watch the way that he reacted and loved and other people, the salvation that he paid for with his own blood. He did it all for you. At the end of Matthew's gospel, he has Jesus saying, I'm sure and surely I'm with you always. Jesus is with you on this journey, this uneven road ahead. So on the uneven road ahead, pay attention to the directions, pay attention to your permanent travel companion, and rejoice with fellow travelers. We're all, as Christians, on this road together, and we should be rejoicing. When the disciples went back to Jerusalem and they started sharing their stories about meeting Jesus, they were rejoicing. They were excited. Hey, something's happened here. Something that we maybe should have expected. Jesus said, you should have expected this. And, uh, and, and it, it, it has happened. And so there's a renewed energy following a time of discouragement uh, and disappointment. One thing I love about this text is how Luke notes that those gathered in Jerusalem said in verse 34, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Now, Simon Peter seems to always emerge at the, 
the front of these stories because he's so outspoken and he's such a larger than life character. But, but I think when I read that, what comes to my mind is that the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon, Simon Peter, who denied him three times right before his crucifixion. Simon Peter, who looked into the empty tomb, and instead of saying, yes, Jesus rose from the dead, he walks away wondering what happened. You know what? He doesn't know. He's confused and uncertain. Simon Peter, imperfect, outspoken, but beloved. And that's what I want us to see, is that we're on this road together, loved by Jesus, who knows we're not perfect, who knows we're going to mess up and, and need his grace and mercy. We need the power of the blood of Jesus because, uh, because we can't live the perfect life. We don't have it in us. And so we rejoice together. And when we rejoice with fellow travelers, we can encourage and bless one another. That's what the church is. The church is a band of travelers who are traveling together in the same direction. And the road is uneven at times. Sometimes it's steep. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes the journey is dangerous. But we are traveling together. And into this rejoicing crowd of disciples who are talking excitedly about the risen Jesus, Jesus walks into the room with them and says, Peace be with you. Wow. Well, I want to encourage you to read the rest of that chapter. It's just a few more verses there, but, but that's where we want to kind of stop our exploration of, of this text. There are a lot of stories about being lost and found in the Gospels. Even those closest to Jesus experience disappointment and discouragement and navigating our way through the road ahead, the uneven road ahead. Remember to pay attention to the directions. Remember your traveling companion and rejoice with your fellow travelers. That's why when we gather together online, I want you to talk to one another because I want you to know you're not traveling this road alone. And I want to encourage you that when we are gathered together on campus and we're singing together and, and, and lifting up God's name together, that it's not just a matter of attending church. It's a matter of rejoicing with the fellow travelers on this uneven road ahead. I want to uh, encourage you, if you have your communion items, to, uh, to have those nearby. Daniel's going to come and lead us in a communion thought in just a moment. Uh, but I do want to I, I do want to thank you for uh, being with us, especially if you were with us through this entire series. So let's think about our communion for just a second. The road to Emmaus is a great story, and it's centered around the, the resurrection of Jesus. And, and this Sunday uh, that this video uh, premieres on social media is going to be the Sunday after Easter. I love Easter because so many people are, are thinking about the resurrection of Jesus, the death that he endured prior to his resurrection, and the life that he lived before he died on the cross. The good thing about our church, and I, I'm so thankful to be a part of this church, we focus on that every week, and we encourage people to think about that really every single day. But each week, each Sunday when we meet, we partake of communion together, and our minds go um, to the cross. It goes to the first century when Jesus was alive, and it goes to the empty tomb as we, as we take these elements, the bread that represents his body, and, and our grape juice, our, our wine that represents uh, the blood that, that flowed through Jesus' body. And so today, it's a blessing to be here with you. Um, and it's that time that we're going to take that together. So I'll say a prayer. And following that prayer, we'll have a song to give you some time um, of reflection. A great song. I love this song, by the way. Uh, but if you will, just bow your head and, and pray with me. Dear God, this morning or this afternoon or whenever it is that, that we're hearing this, I pray that um, our minds do go to uh, the life that you live, the, the perfect and sinless life uh, that gives us the righteousness and the example set before us. I also pray that our minds go to the cross and uh, uh, the punishment and, and the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. And also to the empty tomb where we see uh, the gospel, the good news that we have victory. 
over death. And as we partake of this bread that represents your body, may we seek righteousness and seek your kingdom first in all that we do. And as we uh, partake of the fruit of the vine that represents your blood, may we remember that we have life and life eternal with you, our Father and our Creator. Lord, you are holy and we're so thankful to be your children. Please help us to do this in a, in, in, in a pleasing way. Help us to lay all of our worries, anxieties, our fears, our troubles, lay them at your feet. And at this time, may we be grateful for the best gift that can ever be given. We love you and thank you. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. There's a peace I've come to know. Though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. I can say, Well, again, thank you for joining us this morning for our time together. I'm so excited when I read the stories of Jesus and, and the reactions of the people that uh, he encountered. And, and I know that that's still happening today. We're encountering Jesus in the scriptures with one another and uh, in, our, in our own journeys. And so uh, let's keep doing that. Keep staying in touch with Jesus and with each other. I'm so glad that you were here. I hope we're going to have a prayer in just a moment. I do want to mention before we go, again, a reminder that you can go to facoc.org and 
And uh, there are lots of things that are happening in the church. We don't always talk about on video because we don't know how long, you know, you might be watching this six months from now and those things won't be happening uh, anymore. But we are meeting on campus at 10 uh, on Sunday mornings. We are meeting on campus Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. We're going to continue to have online uh, offerings, uh, Bible studies and devotionals uh, as, as long as we can. And so uh, thank you for joining us. I hope that you will uh, make sure Sure to like and and uh, share this video and then on YouTube uh, to subscribe and uh, and share from there as well. We're going to have a prayer and then we're going to uh, close out for the day. So let's pray together. God, thank you for every person who's watching, whenever it is, if it's six months or a year from now, or if it's right at the moment when this is premiering uh, live online. I pray, Father, that that because you know exactly what everybody's going through, that you will bless them to the best uh, of their needs. And we pray, Father, that you will help us as a church to reach out and have open doors and make people feel welcome Thank you for the progress being made against the pandemic, and, and we're so grateful for all of the efforts being made by so many people, praying for our frontline medical people uh, who, are in, who are dealing with this on a face-to-face -face basis. Thank you for uh, the way that uh, we have opportunity to participate in battling back this virus by doing the things recommended. So in every way, and whatever has happened, to bring us to this point. Keep on carrying us, Father. And I pray for uh, all of us to experience one day again the freedoms that we uh, probably took for granted uh, at some time in the past. Thank you so much for this story about Jesus and for the way that he walks with us on the uneven roads of life. And I pray, Father, for today, if there's somebody who's watching at this moment who's really in the middle of an uneven road, discouragement, disappointment, or trying to settle in, would you help them to see the traveling companion who's with them, the, the Jesus who walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death, where we need fear no evil because you are with us. Thank you again for all you've done, Father. We love you. We praise you. We lift up your name. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer with us, go ahead and type amen in the uh, in the comments. And that kind of lets everybody know that we're praying together. And I think there's power in prayer when we when we join in agreement together. And so uh, thank you again for being a part of today's video. And we hope to see you again next time.
when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, Lord, you never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop, you never stop, you never stop, you never stop. No, you never stop. You move mountains, you cause a war. Because you made